joined now by the co-founder of the Washington Capital-centered blog, Russian Machine Never Breaks, Ian Olin. Ian, first off, is this the decor all the time, or is that background just for us? No, this is this is the decor <laughs> all the time. Um, I have to have Alan May in the background always because he's my uh, friend of me online. So. <laughs> oh, okay, your friend of me. I like that. All right. Well, let's let's dive right into things here. Obviously, there's been a lot of talk this postseason about home ice advantage not exactly being a real thing. Why do you think the Caps have struggled in Washington? Well, I don't know if there's necessarily a ton of truth to that per se. Yeah, they in a small sample they have, but. Uh, they were definitely a good home team over the regular season, and even their away record, they were only six games uh, over 500 during the regular season. I think a lot of it has to do with just situational hockey. When they played games one and two against Columbus at home, they lost both of those games in overtime. I think the team really had to come together to kind of win four straight after that, and I think the team has just been playing some really good hockey. Um, so I, I think it's more more to do with with just it's a random ha happenstance than anything. <laughs> Fair Which enough. Is kind of there, but. Sure. All right. Well, I have to get your thoughts on this Anton Strallman hit from last night's game on Tom Wilson. He will not be punished. Do you think that's the right call? What's your opinion? Well, my opinion was is that I, I think it could have been a major penalty during the game. Um, but I don't know if there should have been supplemental discipline. I think I think what the biggest problem is with the NHL right now is that a lot of people don't really know what is a suspendable action and what isn't. And I think in the future, I would love to see if the NHL could take more of a, a broader stance on head hits. And maybe if anything is targeted in the head, that can be focused as a suspension or something like that. Because I think... In general, we just want head hits out of the game. Sure. It's hard to have an opinion because I just it, it is just so sometimes inconsistent, it's hard to know. Well, we all know how Tom Wilson felt about it based yes. on his post-game comments last night. And one of the things that's been really interesting about what this Washington Capitals team has been able to do over the last four games is the way they've been able to play without Nick Backstrom. Obviously, he's not back in the lineup yet, but I saw an interesting story on your blog about him signing a broomstick. Please give us the background crown on this story and if you think it's a jinx oh great question well so yesterday we did a story on nicholas backstrom he was actually signing autographs with his uh hockey glove still on and we wrote about that and a, a few hours later some of the guys that were there getting autographs from him sent us a picture of him uh after he signed a broom with uh three caps fans and so um i, I went and posted that because it got such a strong reaction um and I don't necessarily believe in jinxes, especially now, because um, when we first started this site in 2009, every year I grew a playoff beard. And uh, this year, nothing. Um, I'm, I'm kind of not into any of that stuff anymore. I, I, you know, I just believe it, it's really the team doing everything. But I, I know I know it bothered a lot of people. I know people <laughs> were really, really mad when people used the shutout word or the S word during uh, during games. So. Um, I respect that, and I know the Caps are very superstitious right now. I know Ovi's doing the, the hot lap before games and, and moving stools right in front of them because it was there the game before when they won. But uh, I, I don't necessarily believe in jinxes, so I think those guys are fine. And I thought it was just a really funny uh, moment, and, and hopefully they will win again and make this mute. Well, we go from talking about jinxes to what a lot of people looked at as a curse for the Washington Capitals and that of course is Sidney Crosby and the Pittsburgh Penguins the Caps struggling in years past to get past the second round and beat Pittsburgh this year they do it so the obvious question is then Ian is this finally Ovi's year oh you know what I hope so. <laughs> I don't believe in jinxes, but I do not want to go on the record for that uh, one way or the other. Uh, I think they've been playing some of their best hockey. Um, I think the thing we did, a, we did an article uh, yesterday where we kind of compared the Caps in the regular season to how the Caps are playing now. Uh, their expected goals numbers are up. Their shot attempt uh, numbers are up. Uh, they're playing the best hockey that they played all year right now. Braden Holtby came back in after Philip Grubauer started the first two games. Um, you know, just to rip off four games in a row against Columbus and just how they played against Pittsburgh. Um, I, my hopes are raising, um, but I, I, you know, I, I hope so. I mean, Ovi, Ovi has gotten a lot of criticism uh, from the beginning of his career. He's, he's been the captain, the leader of the team. And a lot of times, sometimes I think some of the team issues end up getting uh, blamed on him. Uh, and so I hope this is the year that he can kind of 
go all the way with this team and, and, and really do some damage. But um, yeah, I, I am, you know, I, I don't believe in jinxes, but I'm too superstitious to say that. <laughs> yeah, you, like many Caps fans, learning from the past, don't get too excited, deep breaths, and just, it's not over till it's over, right? Okay. All right, Ian, Thanks. I understand that you went to UMBC, so I want to get your thoughts on this. UMBC obviously upset Virginia at the March Madness tournament in college basketball this year. So what was a better moment, UMBC with the upset or the Caps defeating the Penguins? Oh man, that is that is such a hard question. I, I, I'm gonna go two ways here. I, I think UMBC beating Virginia overall was the more crazy, big, huge moment uh, sports-wise. But I think emotionally speaking to the DC area, I definitely think that the Capitals beating the Penguins was uh, just a much bigger deal overall, just because you know, it's not just the Capitals who have not been getting to the conference final. It's been the Washington Redskins. It's been the Wizards. It's been the Nationals who, you know, for whatever reason, when they, they get right to that cusp, they, they choke right before the conference final. So for the Caps to finally get over that hump, I mean, just D.C. is totally different now. I, the amount of people actually enjoying hockey games, I mean, it's, it's <laughs> crazy. I, I can't really stress to people enough who don't live in this area. The, it was in all of our heads. Fans, uh, players, I, I think sometimes, I think the biggest difference between this Caps team and years past is that guys are individually focusing on playing their best game instead of trying to meet expectations that we all have of just get past the second round, win a championship. We need this. So I, I really think that that was a huge moment. I mean, there was uh, a moment after the, ping, after the Capitals beat the Penguins in game six where Obi comes into the locker room and he just lets out this primal roar of, of yeah, oh yeah. And I think I think that really captured about how all of us felt in DC. It was just such a huge moment. And, and I don't want the UBC Sports uh, Twitter account to come after me. Uh, I love you guys and I'm really, really <laughs> proud of you guys. Capitals moment, I think, I think emotionally in this area. That's a great but, but that's a great moment you talked about with Ovechkin going into the dressing room afterwards. It sounds like it was like a decade of frustration yes. and stress just uh, finally exhaled and relieved. All right, where can people read your blog and find you just so anyone watching that doesn't know your blog can, can go check you out? Sure. We're on RussianMachineNeverBreaks.com online. On Twitter, you can find us at Russian Machine. On Facebook, it's Russian Machine Over Breaks. On Instagram, it's RMNB underscore blog. Uh, and all of us, all the authors like me, Ian Oland, uh, are on Twitter. Uh, so we'd love to chat with you guys. And thank you so much for everyone's support. This moment still does not feel real.